Hello, welcome to this video about my boat Pipe Dream. I designed and built Pipe Dream a few years ago out of this uh, calling tower from a Welsh hospital and got it delivered to a barn and uh, had to set about trying to figure out how I was going to build it into a boat. Being young and resilient at the time, I just uh, knuckled down into the work, I figured out how to weld, how to cut, I did my plans and in about a year I was ready to take her out to London to make her into a trimaran and then out to sea to sail. Now after several years of use, I've been carrying out a rather large refit and also trying to complete some modifications that I've wanted to do for some time now. Once complete, I'm hoping that time and money will allow me to get out to sea and do a nice large trip on the wonderful ocean. My first job on arriving in France was to extend the skeg and the rudder area. Basically this was so it would match the, the new keel and just give me that little bit of extra steerage. Unfortunately my trip coincided with the arrival of Storm Dennis which brought quite a lot of rain and nasty conditions. With more bad weather forecasts, I just had to get on with the job and just knuckle down. That's the thing about these trips, you know, it's uh, you only have so much time and yeah, it just has to, you just have to get it done because otherwise it will be put on to the next trip and then the next trip will be delayed and then by the time I get to actually go and test her at sea, it will be a number of jobs shy of what I where I really want to be. Very not the best conditions, but what can you do? Fortunately, the following day was a lot drier, so I moved on to my next job, which was rerouting the cooling system. In a raw water cooling system, the raw water gets pulled up through the seacock here into a water strainer. Here, any bits of seaweed or bits of dirt can get filtered out so that they don't pass into the pump. The pump then pulls the raw water and pumps it up into the heat exchanger. In the heat exchanger, a series of pipes keep the raw water separate from the cooling water inside the engines, but they manage to take the heat from the, the cooling water that's come up from the engine and take that heat into the raw water so that it can be pumped overboard. Meanwhile, the cooling water for the engine is now being cooled down and can pass back into the engines to cool the engines. Now currently my shutoff valves for this long pipe here are right back here at the bathing platform. My idea is, is to cut this pipe out completely and put new shutoff valves and outlets here. This is much easier for me to get to because I can stand up here and quite happily lean over and turn off the valves. The other thing is is if there was a breakage here, let's say a jubilee clip went or there was a split in the pipe or something, then this is very close to the water line and the water can easily then pass into the engine bay. Whereas here, the pipe will actually go up in stainless steel to the heat exchanger and give me about another 20, 25 centimeters above the water line of solid stainless steel pipe. So even if the pipe was to break, little bits of water would come in the boat, but not much. So first job to do was to remove the old outlets and the rear corners of the bathing platform here. So I decided to use the grinder because I didn't want the plasma cutter cutting and burning in the inside of the boat. So I used my grinder with a very thin cutting disc. Uh, it's always fun using the grinder because like you can see here, suddenly something snatches and you almost take your, well you're not going to take your thumb off, but you, I certainly gave myself a nasty little cut there. The manky looking uh, blanket there, sort of rust coloured blanket, is a welding blanket and it's just used to protect bits that you don't want to get damaged. 
So the hole's cut out. I have to make a little plate to cover that area. And what I'm doing here is I'm using 3mm steel. Now the lovely thing about 3mm steel is, you know, you can get a nice big hammer and get a suitable surface and you can get quite a nice curve on it. And I actually managed to get quite a nice compound curve, so it's, it's like a bowed shape. Which just makes it look a little bit nicer when it goes back on the boat and it stops it from distorting and it looks like it's supposed to be the shape that it is. As always with my trips, um, this was done during my holiday and Storm Dennis was raging and uh, it, was, it was getting quite difficult at times to work but luckily on this day it wasn't too windy although I couldn't do much welding without actually having to weld underneath covers. Welding under covers can be quite stressful but it's one of those necessities of using MIG outside in windy conditions because basically MIG relies on a, a shield gas surrounding the, the spark and the, the, the um, filler material that's coming out the end of the gun and keeping the oxygen away from the away from the metal so it can't oxidize quickly and all bubble up. So the wind getting up, it doesn't look very windy on the, this video I know but um, it was actually quite windy. Uh, it occasionally gust as well and that's a real problem because uh, the thing I find with MIG is if there's a consistent sort of wind speed um, then generally you know you it, it doesn't upset the weld too much you know it doesn't blow the shielder gas away but when you get these sudden sort of bursts of gusts of wind you know that's when you really have a problem usually just when you're almost finished and then of course you have to grind out the bad bit and weld it properly again this is always a horrible thing to try and weld underneath covers because you really should try not to breathe in the welding fumes. I had a little bit of ventilation there by the way and I've got into this habit of holding my breath. <laughs> it's quite surprising how long you can hold your breath for when you're you know trying to get that last bit of weld done uh, on a nice run and you don't want to breathe in any fumes. So the hole's nicely welded up and ready for paint. Um, I could get on with the uh, get on with working on the actual outlets. So first job was to drill a hole in the side of the boat, and I used these uh, bimetal hole saws, and they really do work well. Uh, you can use them on steel, stainless steel. So the the side of the hull at this point is six millimeters thick because the the original cooling tower was all made out of six point three millimeter thickness steel. Yeah, after it catches a few times you'll find that you can you can draw these holes really nicely and get quite a nice finish. This particular hole saw I've used oh, countless times on steel, stainless steel, wood, all kinds of materials and even though I treat it really badly like this it's still going strong. It's lost a couple of teeth but uh, yeah it's, it still works fine. I keep the old cutouts as well because uh, sometimes a little round piece of steel like that can be really useful for you know filling in a hole or something. So next job in the process is to clean all the paint off the steel so you've got a nice uh, clean surface to weld onto. For the outlets I'm using Schedule 10 pipe. Part of the joys of working in Imperial and things like that is there's some really weird sort of designations and it's not quite logical how it all works. But basically Schedule 10 is, gives me around about a, a wall thickness of about 2.77 millimeters, which is um, quite good for me to weld into. I'm welding onto stainless steel pipe which is about two millimeter wall thickness so it's a it's a relatively thick sort of material that the, the stainless steel can you know you can weld onto it quite nicely. I'm using 309 LSI wire um, with a argon CO2 mixed gas it's about eight percent CO2 from memory. Normally with stainless you'd use only argon but um, it's too difficult for me to have two bottles of gas and pay two gas surcharges on two bottles. So um, I've just been carrying on using the same gas and yeah, it works quite well. I think Lincoln Electric actually talk about this and say if you're only doing one pass, for example, then uh, there's not really any appreciable difference from using an argon CO2 mix, as long as it's a low percentage CO2. For a lot of work now I use these flap discs on the grinder um, to make a little bit less noise um, which can be good if you're working on a day you shouldn't be working like a Sunday or late at night. Um, they also give quite a bit of a, a nice finish on things so obviously you have to use a grinding disc for heavy grinding but for this sort of finishing stuff these flap discs really work well. 
They also produce a nice finish on things like stainless steel. And in actual fact, if you want to polish stainless steel up, usually you'd use one of these flap discs. And then you'd go to the sort of um, scotch bright type flap discs on a grinder and then on to the polishing buff. So it's like the first stage in the polishing process anyway. Now I am actually getting to the point where I'm going around the boat and trying to finish off some of the stainless steel and polish it up nicely and acid treat it. So again here I'm going to use 309 LSI wire which is the correct wire for welding stainless steel to steel because the water outlet pipe that I've got there I've made out of stainless schedule 10 threaded pipe welded to a piece of stainless pipe and now I'm going to weld it onto the steel hull and um, yeah 309 LSI wire does this really nicely and the, the great thing is about doing this is there are no joints as such you know once you've welded on there you can nicely paint over the the whole area and there's no sealant there's no joint for water to get into uh, for rust to start moving out from the edge and one of the things that I've really got annoyed with over the years is having to go back and redo paint where for example the paints failed on an edge or on a joint you know where some water's got into it like on cleats and um, I don't really enjoy doing paintwork very much and it always involves trying to clean rust off and things like that so a lot of the boat what I've tried to do is remove joints and um, for instance make stainless steel cleats that are then welded directly onto the steel and as I say once that happens you know as long as you make a really good strong joint you've got this lovely situation where there's no actual weak point for the water to get into and start rusting that area from. The other big advantage of course of welding in things and welding pipe or welding cleats directly to the boat is it means you don't have to buy stainless steel nuts and bolts which can sometimes be quite expensive you know if you can't get to the right place in time if you go to a marina shop it's horrendously expensive but also if you make your own cleats the stainless steel you can get from a scrap pile from you know, local fabricators you know for a couple of quid and um, make your own cleat something i try to be really careful about now when i'm grinding is cleaning up after myself because all those little red sparks coming off the grinder there um, are little bits of steel and paint and wherever they land they can essentially sort of burn in slightly and they'll stick there and get quite sticky and you know you come back after a couple of months and you'll see that there's all these little specks of rust all over the side of the boat and it's not actually the boat rusting it's just the little bits that have just landed on there so I try and clean everything off with a pressure washer or a scotch bright pad to make sure I don't have that issue. Also be careful around glass because those little sparks when they land on the glass they actually burn in slightly so if you've got your car nearby you can make quite a mess of all the, the nice windows and everything.